A series of events is celebrating the centenary of the birth of Australian-born artist Sidney Nolan this year. Some of his works can also be seen in our region as a gallery in Chichester focuses on Nolan's time living and working in Britain. Our reporter Nicole Heese went to hear more about the leading figure of 20th century art and one of his main influences, an Australian outlaw. His works are said to be some of the most diverse and creative in 20th century art. And as this year marks the centenary of Sidney Nolan's birth, an exhibition at Pallant House Gallery in Chichester is currently shining a light on some of the artist's most iconic paintings. Sidney Nolan was born in Melbourne, Australia in 1917, the son of a tram driver. He grew up to be Australia's one of the leading artists in Australia in the 20th century. And what is not so well known is that in 1953 he moved to England permanently and stayed here until his death in 1992. While when he arrived in England he received a great deal of fame and was very much included in the British art world. However, after his death or shortly before his death his reputation seemed to diminish somewhat and that's why we're having the show here at Chichester. Pallant House Gallery has become famous for reviving reputations of artists that have really slipped under the radar a little bit. And Nolan certainly fits into that category. The period of his work from 1953 onwards doesn't receive quite as much as attention globally. So this is a fantastic opportunity to really look at Sidney Nolan in Britain, which is the title of the exhibition. Nolan's way to Great Britain was paved by art historian Sir Kenneth Clarke, who was instantly impressed by the artist's work. He went and visited Nolan in his studio and was really overwhelmed by the quality of his painting. And he encouraged him to come to England and that he would help him try and get a show in London. So Nolan, the following year in 1950, came over to England for one year and lived in Cambridge. He went back to Australia, but shortly afterwards, felt that he needed to move back to Europe. That's where his artistic career had to evolve. One of Nolan's major influences was the Australian outlaw Ned Kelly. Before he left Australia in 1956, he painted a painting called Ned Kelly, which was a very um, notorious bushranger in Australia. He was often compared to Robin Hood in some ways, but his opinion on him is completely divided because he was trying to help the working classes get more financial security in Australia and was always said to be incredibly polite to ordinary people. But on the other hand, he did murder quite a few policemen, which was his fight. And his sort of status as a hero in some quarters and very much an anti-hero and villain in others, I think appealed to Nolan. In 1944, he'd actually absconded from the Australian army and so was an outlaw himself. And then in 1945, his brother tragically drowned while just before he was decommissioned from the army. And these sorts of events possibly drew him to Ned Kelly. So when Nolan came to England, he commenced a second series of Kelly paintings. And this version here from 1956, Kelly's Spring, is really fascinating because not only has he changed the colours of the blue background, here we have a much more northern hemisphere, colder, darker blue, but he's also referring to events in the Hungarian uprising that he'd read about in the news and had really upset him. So this is an important aspect of his works of Kelly. They evolve over his career and they take on a universal quality of human suffering and also loss. Some critics saw Australian art as a colourful alternative to the sombre colours of post-war British art, and this was shown as Nolan was soon recognised being one of the greatest artists under 40. The exhibition also includes a suit of armour which Nolan kept at his house, once worn by Mick Jagger, who played Ned Kelly in the 1970 film. Ned Kelly created the armour and it, and it was an incredibly primitive type of armour. It was basically made from plowshares. So you just simply have this helmet with a horizontal slit for the eyes. And Nolan really made use of this. Sometimes there are no eyes and you just see the landscape behind. In other instances, you have eyeballs and some of those can be slightly comical. Or here he's just avoided the horizontal eye hole and just put the, in this case almost square, 
uh, armour around his helmet. The armour actually was quite successful and it did actually protect the Kelly gang from the police shootout in the end, although it didn't cover his whole body, so the police ended up shooting him in the legs and he did get captured eventually. Sidney Nolan in Britain can be seen until the 4th of June. Nicole Ries, for That's Solent.